What's up, man? What's up, man? Good to see you. Good to see you too, man. How you doing? Good, good. How's your photo of July, man? Crazy party? Good, yeah. Went all over the place. <laughs> I saw some stuff you posted from the... You were at a pool party, right, somewhere? Yeah. Yeah, I went to a couple of those. Yeah, decided to get out for once. <laughs> That's awesome, man. All right, let's get to it, man. I want to give a shout-out to Manscaped. Use code uh, GENIRON20 for 20% off. And all of your fans, all of the listeners can go check it out right now on manscaped.com. Did you um, get the Manscaped products? Yeah, I got them, but I have not used them yet. But I will as soon as I'm about, I'm about ready. For, I'm about due for that trim right now. So I'm excited to try it. Sounds good. Sounds good, man. All right. So let's get to the first topic, man. Um, so Kai Green, I know you know him. Um, he posted a picture of his current physique update. Did you see that? Yeah, it's all over the place. I know, he went, people went crazy for that one. It's basically, he's like over 300 pounds, and he's looking ripped. Yeah, I don't really think that's accurate, man. Um, you think it's a fake picture? I, I just don't think he's 317, not a 5'8", five 5'9", five bro. Not that ripped. Uh -huh. Really? Nah. But will you impress... You're, talk you're talking to the king of scales here, bro. I'm, like, obsessed with the scales. So, you know, I mean, like, I, I mean, I'm speed at my all-time biggest... Um, you know, I was uh, 360, but not even nowhere as near as lean as he was. So I just feel like at his height, um, at that weight, it just doesn't make any sense. You know, how much um, you think? How much you think he weighs? In that picture, 285. But honestly, that's even amazing for a guy that's five eight, five nine, and, and shredded. You know, that's massive as hell. You know, like let's be real. How many people are walking the earth five eight? I don't know. Is he five eight or five nine? I think five nine, I believe. Okay, so how many people are walking the earth five foot nine, two eighty five shredded to the bone? Not, not really many at all. So even that's pretty ridiculous, you know. But to, to say to say three seventeen, I, I would say no, bro. You know, I used to get a, I used to get a lot of shit about my weight too. People were like you're not three fifty, not three sixty. So I'd always show myself at the gym getting weighed. You know, you got to keep in mind I'm also. 6'3 with shoes on, so that's a taller man, you know? <laughs> no, for sure. But, okay, forget the weight for a second. Do, do you, did you find the picture to be uh, impressive? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, Kai, you know, he has an okay physique. You know, I've never been a huge Kai Green fan. Um, you know, I'm not really a fan of anyone. You know, no, I'm not trying to, you know, attack Kai at all. He's a great bodybuilder and he's killing it. Um, but, you know, as far as, like, Am I a fan? No. You know, I'm not really a fan of anyone right now in the industry, you know, um, currently for bodybuilding. You know, I haven't really been following it like I used to. But, you know, when Kai posted those pictures, he actually started poking at Phil Heath. Did you see that? He was like, yo, let's go. Let's do a one-on-one. -on -one. You know what I mean? Obviously, it's all fun and games, but, you know, people, fans went crazy for that type of stuff, which they always do if he posts, you know, he posts it. You know what? <clears throat> I've never really been a... You know, I've never really been into watching the Kai versus Phil um, stage, you know, drama or whatever you call it. The, um, Vic, you know, fighting for number one. Um, I was more of the Ronnie Coleman versus Jay era. But I will say this. If they both hit the stage again to go at it, I think that would be legendary. Um, I think it would give bodybuilding like a whole new holy cow. I need to see this. Like it'd be exciting again. Um, cause Phil, you know, he's pretty much retired and then Kai's retired. So if they came at it, like kind of like a, some type of amazing boxing match, you know what I mean? Like, like some two guys from retirement, you know, just came back. Um, well, that's, that's, he's, he's talking about what he was talking about. Actually, exactly what you're saying. He's talking about doing like a thriller type, uh, pay-per-view event, just one-on-one. -on -one. And if people can judge, I guess, or it can be judges there or whatever, but like no other bodybuilder, just them two, you know, head to head. Yeah, that could that could still be pretty big, man. I mean, I would check it out for sure. Um, like I said, I'm not Phil. I'm not a Phil Warkai fan, but I would check that out. That'd be very entertaining to see. If an event like this would take place, right? Which is, let's say, let's say they make that happen. Let's say this, you know, I don't know if there's enough money for it for them to actually do it. You know what I mean? Because I don't know how much money would generate a pay per view. I don't know. It all comes down to the the interest level. You know what I mean? Just because people react to it on social media doesn't mean it's going to tra transition to dollars on pay-per-view, right? But let's say they made them do it. Um, do you think there should be like exhibition only just for the show or do you think it should be actual winner of the event? 
What do you mean by that? Like somebody will decide who wins the event, whether it's the whether it's people decide during a live event or whether it's people. People, man, you know it's kind of crazy. I, I've never really understood bodybuilding and the judges. You know what I mean? Like you got these like people that judge. It's like you know. I feel like, in my opinion, I feel like bodybuilding and judging should have been like, you know, they should have got like Jay Cutler, Ronnie Coleman, you know, like um, Dexter Jackson. They should get like legends from the sport to judge. You know, these shows they got like normal, average looking people. Why are they? the ones judging shows they never even competed or have like, like I, I always wondered how that worked with um judges. Like, like you, I see the people doing like the judging. I'm like, who are you people? Like, do you even, do you even lift? You know, like I never really, I really never understood that, man. I felt like they got like Ronnie and Jay, like pay them some good money and have them come out and do like the, like the Arnold and the Olympia, like those shows that actually matter, like the real shows, you know? Um, I feel like that's what they should do, you know, have like the top legends in the sport judging. These they know, you know, they were at perfection at one point, so they know what it takes and how it looks. You know what I mean? I don't think the judges in a IABB Pro or NPC even get paid. I think it's more volunteer uh, type thing. I, I think. Do you know? What if what if they had a judge? What, what if they picked a judge to do like, you know, the Arnold or something? And maybe this guy had a thing against Kai. You know, or had a thing against Roly. Like they're just gonna judge. They don't give a fuck. They're just gonna judge. You know, well, that, like, no, but they have they have a panel. What I understand is they have a panel of uh, six judges, right? Whether it's at, a, yeah. at a, like a pro show, right? And then they take like all, everybody's scores. If one has something against the person, like you should kind of maybe balance out. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm assuming that's how they do it. Yeah, well, I get what you're saying, that it, and that is correct. But what I was trying to say is, what if one of these judges disliked a bodybuilder who was not going to be honest? They're going to be like, oh, this guy sucks. So, I, you know, zero, 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 you know what I mean? So, I don't know, man. It's just kind of scary with the judging. You just never know, man. So sometimes I've seen people won, and I'm like, how did how did third place get third place? Or how did six get six? Like, it's mind-blowing, you know? You know, you I, know. You know what I never understood is like, wh wh how do they judge so fast? Because they hit, like, let's say you have six bodybuilders on stage, right? And they hit a pose, which lasts like, you know, a few seconds really, right? How do they, like, every time I ask Steve Weinberger, how do you do it? He's like, well, I just see, you know, I'm seasoned, like, I know how to do it quickly. And they always, the judges always tell you, like, live is, you know, it, pictures don't mean anything. That's, they all say the same thing, right? Pictures is all, like, after the fact. You got to see it live. That's the only way you can judge. But I'm like, how do you have enough time to see them all? Like, you know, what I, mean? I feel like some bodybuilders don't get enough, you know what I mean? Attention. It's a mystery, brother. I, I never understood it myself. Yeah, man, I was, I was wondering about it. But you know, it's interesting if, if they were to do like the live event, right? Pay per view. So I guess people can vote in a system live, right? And then the winner of that voting will get the pro, will get the victory, basically. But even then, it's not guaranteed to be honest because what if just. Kai's fans will dominate the pay-per-view. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, they're both pretty, like, Kai and Phil, they're both pretty, like, neck and neck with the fans. I think they have, like, half people like Phil and half like Kai. Like, I don't think it's, like, 60-40. I think it's, like, half and half, man. You got your Kai fans and you got your Phil fans. You know what I mean? Um, and they both get a lot of shit. You know, um, Kai, Kai Green gets shit for, you know, um, his extended stomach um, maybe smaller arms, um, you know, kind of look like that. And then also fill for his stomach, you know, as well. So, uh, you know, people do hit them for certain things, you know, but that's every bodybuilder. Everybody, every bodybuilder pretty much gets picked on something, you know what I mean? But that's like, you know, so they both got about the same amount of, you know, um, um, you know, weak points, is, you know, so I feel like it would de definitely work, you know, like um, if they did go at it. It would definitely be like a good um, uh, rivalry. Like it would be really people would be like, "Whoa!" You know, what I mean, like, did they bring up their weak points? And did they bring? Did they step up? Did they better themselves from the last shows? You know, did they improve their physique? You know, so I feel like they both have the same amount of flaws. So it would be really, you know, cool to see if they, you know, stepped up. You know, I was talking to Victor Martinez recently, right? We did an interview with him. And he, Victor? Victor Martinez, yeah. And he said the only way he would want to come back on stage ever is to do the, a pay-per-view type event against Jay Cutler, potentially. You know, 2007 rematch they had, you know, that was a controversial decision. And, and yeah. 
in people's opinions, you know what I mean? That's why everybody says it was a controversial decision because people said that, you know, Victor was more supreme that year. I don't know if you remember that show. In 2007, right? Yeah, a lot of people are saying that um, he had it. Um, I'd have to go back and look at the pictures, but yeah, I do. I did hear that a lot that he had it. In 2007, yeah, um, that has come up a lot. Man, Victor's been around forever too, huh? For a minute, yeah. Um, I think unofficially, yeah. I think he's. I don't think he ever he's, came out as retired. Yeah, he's not competing anymore. Looks, he looks great though. He has great physique. Uh, but w would you watch that one, Victor Martinez versus uh, Jay Cutler? I would rather watch that than any other show. <laughs> I'd, I'd watch that over the Kai and Phil show any day. Yeah, absolutely. You're, you're Jay yeah. Yeah. You, Cause you're a Jay fan, yeah. I, Jay's my boy, you know, like I, you know, I see him all the time at the gym and, uh, you know, I don't think he'd ever do it. You know, he's too, he's done with any of that stuff. You know, he makes his money. He does his thing. I don't think he'd ever be a part of that, but you know, it'd be cool to dream. How about a pay-per-view event, you versus Big Rami? <laughs> Me, me, me versus Big Rami now with my injury, or me at a hundred percent. At a hundred percent. Ooh, <laughs> maybe. I would watch that. I would watch that. Good exposure. It'd be uh, good exposure for sure. Maybe not bodybuilding. Maybe something else, like an arm wrestling competition or something. Arm wrestling, I, I I'd get, I'd get murdered at. Um, I don't. The last time I arm wrestled somebody was 2009. It was at a pool party. And this guy was drunk, and he's like, dude, I'll arm wrestle you for $300. And I'm looking at him, like, well, he must be a pro or something, because fuck is going to, you know, throw away $300. And I look at him, and he's just, like, wobbling. I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to risk it. So I go to arm wrestle him, right, like this. And I'm ready to arm wrestle him. And I'm just, like, done. Like, I, I was like, 300 yes! That was the last time I arm wrestled. Um, I made 300 bucks. Um, the only reason why I've never done it after that um, or the only reason why I'd never done it besides that is because the last time I did it before that was at a party. And um, I, uh, I that's when I'm back in my natty days, actually. So this is like 2005 or six. And um, some dude arm, wanted to arm us and he thought he was a big shot. And um, <clears throat> we were sitting there like this forever. And then, um, you know, like, cause he was a pretty big guy too. And we were just like this forever. And then um, I eventually won, but then I couldn't train arms for a whole month. And I just told myself, I'll never do that again. It's not worth it. Yeah, so look, I've only arm wrestled twice, probably ever. So yeah, Rami would kill me in arm wrestling. How about a how about like an eating competition, like a hot dog eating competition? I'm done. He got me again. We're two for two, man. I suck at eating. There's got to be something I can beat Rami in. <laughs> got to be something, man. What about the whip check? <laughs> you got that one. The whip check or no? Think I got Robbie on the list check? <laughs> I, think, I think you do. I think you do. <laughs> yeah, I'm a wide guy. Um, so it's interesting because, um, you know, when it comes to retirement, right, um, you know, you mentioned Victor Martinez being retired, right? There's recently a bodybuilder. Uh, his name is Nicholas Vayan. Yeah, um, he came to Vegas, and uh, we, we lifted a few times together. And uh, if you guys go, go through my Instagram, go through my Instagram, and um, if you look through my Instagram, you'll see a picture of me and him, and I'm out angling him. Um, I posted it. Yeah, it's probably from like three years ago. So if you guys can find it, post it right here for everyone to see. Um, we, we, yeah, we did some workouts together, and um, I thought he had a phenomenal physique. You know, um, he it, it honestly looked like a thicker Flex Lewis. You know, like he was thick. Um, that's what she said. And um, <laughs> I was just mind blown. I'm like, this dude's going to go so far in the sport, you know, and he didn't even take that much shit either. Like me, like a, a genetic freak, you know? And, um, yeah, I, I heard he just retired and, you know, um, am I, am I for it? Whatever makes him happy. You know, if he wasn't making any money or he was getting tired or the training and, and the supplementation, all that was taking a toll, or maybe he's just getting older, you know, fuck it, you know, I would say good for him, you know? His name is actually Nicholas Nicholas Valand, actually. But so in his this, in his uh, explanation why he's retiring, he said that he loves bodybuilding. He's still pretty much all for it. But he he said that he has one percent doubt, and he said if a bodybuilder has one percent doubt that he's not confident in himself anymore, even at one percent, then he shouldn't be doing it anymore. That's kind of what his explanation was. It was interesting. 
you know? 1%, may, I'd say maybe more like 5 to 10%, but yeah, no, I get where he's coming from, but uh, yeah, man, you need to be all in, you know, if you're trying to be the best in the world, so I get where he's coming from with the 1%. Um, if you're trying to be Mr. Olympia, yeah, you, it, it needs to be a hundred for sure. Um, and if he, yeah, he, um, you know, after year, after year, after year, man, I'm sure it gets draining, you know, um, unless you're at the top, you know, pushing and pushing and pushing, you know, it, it's gotta be draining, man. I get it for sure. You know, you want life too, you know, I'm sure he wants to have fun and, you know, have a normal life and eat whenever he wants to eat. And, you know, obviously always train hard and eat right, but. You know, when you compete, it's a whole nother level, man. You know, like for me, you know, I, I'm night and day from when I competed. When I competed, it was like I just lived for every meal. Like I'd be on the clock. Okay, I got to eat. I got to eat. I got to eat. I got to eat. I got to do cardio. I got to train. I got to eat. You know, your whole life schedule just revolves around a show. There's nothing else. Like you put eating in front of everything. If you want to go on a date, if you want to go to whatever the hell it is, if you want to go on a town, like – got to make sure you're doing your meals not missing cardio it's just it's a lot to take man when you used to be a competitive bodybuilder did it affect your mood were you in a bad mood a lot of the times yeah yeah i was always crabby at night all my girlfriends hated me they're like i don't want to be around you just stay downstairs and now you're mostly in a good mood yeah i'm pretty happy you know besides my injury you know as soon as to normal i'll be super happy uh, i want to get into a, actually a practical question right um is it possible to be not a pro bodybuilder obviously but you know a regular guy that wants to be huge and lean and does it does it, everybody have to do meal prep necessarily can you just you know still find ways to eat healthy without doing all that counting and weighing food and doing meal prep meal prep's a must man um whether you're meal prepping or you have a meal prep company um, I have a meal prep company that sponsors me here in Vegas, so it's a huge help. So two two out of four of my meals. I, I usually just eat around four meals a day right now. You know, nothing crazy, sometimes even three. Um, and, uh, you know, those meals, they really come in handy. Just throw them in the microwave, and bam, you're eating in two minutes. So, yeah, I would definitely say meal prep or a food prep company is a must if you want to get shredded or bulk or just basically bodybuilding in general, you need a meal prep. Yes, there's no way around it. You can't just eat out every meal. You'll get too bloated. When you use your meal prep company, right, did you um, basically ask for a specific type of macro packed meal? Like, Because sometimes you get it, but like, how do you know what if it's really good for you or not? You know what I mean? Um, yeah, no, they're, um, the macros are right on the top. And then I'll just add a little extra with it if they don't reach my macros. Every meal is a little different. So if one meal has 50 carbs and 50 protein, maybe I want another uh, 25 or 50 carbs. I'll just eat something with it, you know, um, maybe a little extra rice or a protein muffin or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely a must, you think. So if you if you take your fitness seriously, if you're bodybuilding seriously, you, you got to do it. Yeah. Mm, interesting. Um, I thought maybe you you would have another opinion because you know you kind of like you know I I'm, I'm not saying you don't you know you because you told me you don't count your food like you don't really count that type of stuff before so I figured I didn't know that would be your opinion you know what I mean Oh no it, it is my opinion yeah um you you ha you usually a common bodybuilder eats five to six to even seven meals a day so I mean you can't be eating out every meal like that's just not gonna work for your budget or for um you know the sodium intake or the crap levels of what you're eating so yeah no you definitely need a meal prep for sure do you think you can eat healthier places like for example uh, chipotle you know what i mean like not not to it's, there's many places like chipotle right where they just kind of like it's a conveyor belt of food and, and you yeah, decide no, what to I, put on it i tell a lot of my clients you know you can definitely do chipotle here and there for sure as long as you eat you know eat the right foods from chipotle not the cheese and sour cream and all that crap if you do it right you know the meat the rice the tomatoes you can actually yeah absolutely do it yeah for sure Mm -hmm. I was wondering about that because technically, depending what you put on it, you know what I mean? Like out of that, you know, variety of things. The choice is in your hands. It's just whether you do the right way or the wrong way. Are you going to listen to your stomach or your brain? Mm -hmm. What's your favorite in health wise uh, fast food places like that you actually go to, to you know, but still eat healthy there? Which, do, you, do you have any ones? Um, there's a place. Well, there's a there's two places here. 
um, I like to go to. They're Samurai Sam's. I have my own bowl there, kind of like Jay Cutler does. Um, so they give me a good discount there. So I just, um, you know, I'll get a, a big steak and rice bowl out to the gym, you know. Um, there's also Foodie Fit here in Vegas. That's a meal prep company. You walk in and just grab the meals. So those are my go-to places. Sometimes I'm a little burnt out with that. I'll do Chipotle or, you know, um, another teriyaki type of steak and rice place. But, you know, I'm not really big on fast food or anything like that. You know, as crazy as it sounds. Another thing I want to ask you, a lot of people email about that, actually. Um, they ask you, Craig, like, what's the right way to break through? Like, like people, a lot of people reach their plateaus, right? Like, they, they reach their, they think that's the max that they can put the muscle on in certain areas or, you know, this and that. How do you break through that? Like, how do you, what's the right approach to actually go beyond that to the next level? Well, man, I remember at one point, I was 280, and I was like, man, if I could just be 300, like, that would be, like, life-changing. Like, I'd feel immortal, you know? And then I hit 300, and I was like, well, what about 315, you know? Like, that sounds pretty crazy, too. And then you hit 315, and then you're like, well, 325, now that's, that's crazy, you know? Then you hit 325, and then I'm like, 350, okay, now that's... Actually, you know, a huge reason um, why I went to the route to get in as big as possible is because of Generation Iron. Um, I don't know if you knew this. You probably do. But in 2016, um, I was working legs at the gym one day and um, my phone just blew up like, bah, 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 bah. I'm like, dude, what happened? Did someone die? And um, everyone's like, Craig, Generation Iron claimed you the biggest freaking bodybuilder right now or, or something like that. I was like, what? Yeah, right. And I look and I was just like what the you know i mean i was like mind blown i remember i couldn't even like take it in i was like because i mean i wasn't really that known back then in 2016 like you know fairly you know and um <clears throat> yeah you guys claim me the biggest freak and i was just like okay they think that's freaky i was like 320 i'm like let's let's step it up let's get nuts you know and that's when my journey to 350 happened i'm like i'm gonna start to get even bigger you know, let's, let's, let's do the work. Let's literally show these people what I can do. So then I hit 350 and then even 360 after that, you know, and, um, that's kind of my story of how, you know, it's, it's kind of crazy how it works. Now we have a podcast together. That's crazy. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, generation iron is the reason why I actually went a whole nother route with my bodybuilding to get super big. It was because you guys claim me the biggest freak and, I was like, okay, well, I'm not really trying right now. I'm chilling, you know, so let's try. So what did it take for you to break through this plateau, like mentally, physically, like for, from to go from, you know, that way to that way? Don't, that don't miss a gym session. Don't miss supplementation. Don't miss sleep. Do whatever it takes. Do the work. If you want it bad enough, you'll make it happen, and it will happen. Get a coach. Hire me. Hire anybody. You know, someone that knows their shit. If you want to get big, hire someone that you look up to that's massive. If you want to get shredded, Hire someone that you look up to that's shredded, you know, um, you know, that helps too, man, because we know how to um, push through. Sometimes people, they just stop. Their body stops. They can't get past 350 or sorry, 250. Let's go. Let's hit 275. You can do it. I did it. You know, why can't you? Do? You know, let's go. But you know what happens a lot? I know people like that, actually. They say, well, I did everything I could. My leg's just not going to grow. Because no, you're not there. So, so basically, they should not just blame it and just stop doing it they, they, there's always a way you're saying there's always a way you got to switch things up if you're eating eight meals a day and you're not growing switch up the meals eat different things all right craig good talking to you man that's all we have for today it was good talking to you man till next time get huge <laughs>